92.7 WOBM. Good morning, Sean Michaels with you. And joining me right now is Dr. Deborah Norris. Talk about her latest book. It's called In the Flow, Bridging the Science and Practice of Mindfulness. And Deborah joins us this morning. Good morning, doctor. Good morning, Sean. Pleasure to be with you. Glad to have you with us. You know, stress is something we hear so much about. It's a big topic these days. And I thought we would start by you just defining and describing what mindfulness actually is. Well, mindfulness is a state of being. What we do is we practice meditation to become more mindful. It's being a clarity of mind, clarity of thought, being able to shift one's focus, control one's state of being. That's what mindfulness is. Now, when we use mindfulness practices or what type of mindfulness practices would we use when we talk about relieving stress? Ah, for stress. Well, there's all different kinds of meditation practices. It's like you practice meditation like you, you go to the gym and practice lifting weights. And when you, when you practice meditation, you become more mindful. And when we do mindfulness meditation, what we're doing is we're paying attention to the current state of being in our physical body as we're feeling it. We're, we're attentive to the emotions as they arise. And so when you feel stress arising, you're, you're consciously paying attention. Does it feel like tension in your shoulders, uh, rapid heartbeat? Are you have tension in your face or your jaw? Is your stomach roiling? What's going on? When you pay attention to these things, over time you begin to cultivate control of letting those things go. You can relax your shoulders. You can breathe more deeply. And in that way, we're actually self-regulating the experience of stress. Now, you talk about the term in the flow. How does a person find the flow, as you call it? So the flow is that sense of things clicking, the life unfolding the way you want to. You have a sense of direction, a sense of purpose. I often hear people say, I feel like I am who I want to be, and I want to be who I am. So that's what I mean by that sense of flow. And when you feel it, you know that's it. That you're riding the the wave. <laughs> you're riding high. It, it feels good. Now, multitasking. Today's society, we're all doing it. We're, we, you know, we're we're writing. We're working. We're we're taking phone <laughs> calls. We're making sure dinner is ready. We're you know making sure there's gas in the car. The dog's got to go for a walk. Is multitasking bad for our brains, or is it a good thing for us? Well, it's a gift. It's, a, it's fine to be able to multitask. What we want to be able to do, though, is to stop. And what happens is nowadays, I know, believe me, Sean, I pick up my cell phone to make a phone call, and there's 12 text messages and 20 emails, and it distracts our attention all over the place. So life these days, modern life sort of encourages us to be multitaskers, and that's fine. We just want to be able to turn it off. We want to be able to stop and slow down and enjoy simple pleasures and focus and conversation. And so mindfulness meditation seems to be an antidote to modern life in that way, helping us to keep keep balance and being able to slow down. We're talking with Dr. Deborah Norris all about a mindfulness and relaxation and dealing with stress and meditation. A lot of folks are finding that meditation, doctor, also helps when dealing with things like cancer, heart disease, chronic pain. These are some of the things they're finding that meditation can be good for. And you wouldn't have thought there was a connection, but there is between body and mind, I guess. Well, apparently there is a mind-body connection. And research on mindfulness is helping us to understand all the details about that and what it is we're actually doing that creates that. And it's actually a very simple practice of introspection, taking a few moments, five 20, some people spend a whole hour doing it, but you don't have to. Take a few moments, sit down, close your eyes if you want to, and bring your focus inside. What are you feeling in your heart, your shoulders? Are you holding tension somewhere in your body? And then just take some nice deep breaths and begin to shift that. I call it subtle yoga because when you relax your shoulders, when you bring ease into your back or your belly, you're actually shifting your mood, and the biochemistry of the body is apparently shifting at that time, too. 
Yeah. It's profound what we can do for ourselves. There's a lot of, uh, you know, I use the term like generically, but there's a lot of noise in our lives. And I think yeah. everybody just needs a few moments a day to silence the noise. And I, I don't mean necessarily sound. It could be, you know, optical. It could be, you know, audible, uh, whatever the case may be. There's a lot of things going on. We just need to chill once in a while, right? <laughs> we sure do. And that, that's exactly why it's an antidote for modern life. And sometimes that noise just feels like static in the brain, yeah. all those thoughts and images that have been flowing through the mind. So just let that static, just observe it, as opposed to being it, observe the static of the mind. The book is available at Amazon.com and bookstores everywhere? At Amazon.com. Very good. It's called In the Flow, Bridging the Science and Practice of Mindfulness. We all need to take a few moments. And Deborah Norris, we thank you for being with us and uh, shedding some light on this. My pleasure.